Okay, so we are continuing with Gauss reduction, with, no, with determinants. We're continuing with calculating determinants by Gauss reduction. Okay, so we had, we found that the determinant of an upper triangular matrix is just the product of the diagonals, so that you, if you could Gauss reduce it, Gauss reduce the matrix to the upper triangular form, like Roche form forms upper triangular form, then easy to calculate the determinant of that. So as long as you know how the determinant changes with, an, with the Gauss reduction step, then we can calculate the determinant that way. Okay. Each of the Gauss reduction operations changes the determinant in a simple way. Okay, so that's going to be useful. Consider the example. Consider the four determinants below. Um, so we have three, two, six, matrix three, two, six, one, and the determinant is you know, three minus 12, so minus nine. Here we have the same, here we've just swapped row one and row two, and we have, now we have nine, right, instead of minus nine. Here we have divided row one by three, and the determinant has also been divided by three. And here we have added row one to row two, right? So row two has become row two itself plus row one, and the determinant has not changed. From these calculations, it seems that scaling one row of a matrix by a constant scales the determinant of the matrix by the same constant, right? That's from there to there. Exchanging two rows of a matrix changes the sign of the determinant from there to there. Adding one row of a matrix to another row doesn't change the determinant at all. It's from there to there. Now, these observations hold for all square matrices, actually of all sides, n bind matrices, and now we're going to show why below. Okay, so this is like the investigation that tells us what the theorems might be and what the patterns might be. And now we're going to try and show that these, these really are the patterns because it's a lot easier to show that something is a pattern, is the pattern, when you, when you already have a guess for what the pattern is than just having to, than just having to simultaneously figure out what the pattern is and prove that it truly really is the pattern. Okay. If the square matrix B is obtained from A, by scaling one row of A by the constant K, then the determinant of B equals K times the determinant of A. Okay, multiply a row by constants. That's the same as multiplying the determinant by constant. Okay, explanation. Assume that it was the pth row of the matrix A that was scaled by K to produce B. So it doesn't really matter, any old row. Now we calculate determinant A and determinant B by expanding along row P. Okay, so we can expand along the row that we multiplied by K. So first of all, we have the determinant of the matrix A where the row was not scaled, right? So, you know, I don't know, I, I don't know why this, these notes always like using the, the notation of including the, the minor and the sign. It's often just much simpler just to put cofactor pj there, right? The cofactor is, includes that minus one, and so it's notationally, sometimes there's no reason, there's no reason to get into the nitty-gritty of the fact that there's a, of what the cofactor actually is, just to put the cofactor there. Okay, the term of b, of course, expand along row P of B. So here the entries of row B. Use all the cofactors. Uh, but these are, this was cofactor of A, and this is now the cofactor of B. So I'll put a dash to say it's, it's a different cofactor. It's a cofactor of A. In fact, you know what I'll do? I'll put cofactor of, I'll put it like this. I'll say cofactor of A, right, PJ. And this will be cofactor of B. PJ is cofactor of B. Okay. Now, the point is that oh, this is B, it should be B, P, J, not B, P, J, that's ridiculous. B, P, J. Now, the point is that because we multiplied row P to get matrix B, we multiplied row P of matrix A by K. So B, P, J is always K times A, P, J, right? B, P, J equals K times A, P, J. So we can factorize out the K, okay? from all of the terms. And here we have A, P, J times the cofactors. Okay, but the cofactors, the matrices A and B are the same apart from the pth row. We only, that was the only row we changed, multiply that by K. So the cofactors of things in the pth row are the same for each matrix because everything apart from that pth row is the same. Because remember, when you calculate a cofactor, the cofactor depends on all the rows and columns apart from the row and column you're in. 
So here we're in rho p, so the cofactor does not depend on rho p, has nothing to do with rho p. So since the matrices are the same outside of rho p, the cofactors are the same on rho p. So this cofactor is actually the cofactor of A. This cofactor of, cofactor of B, P, J is always equal to the cofactor of A, P, J. Let me write that down. Cofactor of P, J, B equals cofactor of P, J, A. Okay. And so, and that's because, that's because, oh, sorry. That's because B, I, J equals A, I, J whenever I is not equal to P, right? Whenever we're not on row P, the, ma the, the, the matrices are the same. Okay, so we have K times that thing, but that's just K times the determinant of A, right? K times that. There it is. Okay. So we've shown that if you multiply one row of a matrix by a scalar, then the determinant changes by being multiplied by the same scalar. Okay. And I'll leave it there for now.